Hello, everyone. Uh, just want to uh, welcome everybody here and thank you all for being here today. I just want to recognize a few of our elected officials who are in the audience here today. We have uh, Senator Michael Moore, Senator Kennedy, Representative O'Day, Representative LaBeouf, Representative Dunyu, Representative Keefe, and uh, City Council Candy Merrill Carlson is also with us, with us today. Our Mayor Sarah Quella from Fitchburg, welcome. Appreciate it being here. We have uh, also Joe Carlson from the AFL CIO is with us today. I think I got all the electeds here. So, and I just want to recognize the Healy Driscoll administration for all their work, not only putting forth so many initiatives, but communicating this information. This is the second week in a row where Governor Healy, the Lieutenant Governor, has come out to the city of Worcester, much appreciated. And as, yeah. <laughs> I like that. And uh, Secretary Augustus, it's good to see you here again. Much appreciated. And uh, oh, ANF Secretary Matt Glogowitz, yeah. get that. Welcome, much appreciated. And also City Manager, I just want to thank Governor. You put a great team together for housing. You really did. Crystal Conway from Mass Housing, who's also a number of times been here in the City of Worcester. So much appreciate the investment here, and, uh, and with the Secretary. So uh, this takes a lot of work, and we really appreciate all the work that you've been doing. Uh, the housing bond bill is exactly what we will need to address the ongoing housing crisis. This multi-billion dollar plan will jumpstart the production of homes and make housing more affordable across the state. This plan will fund or enable to, to creation to more than 40,000 homes, including 22,000 new homes for low-income households and 12,000 homes for middle-income households. That will be essential to keeping up with our growing population. The focus on building more housing is in line with our Worcester Now Next plan, which plans to help our city grow sustainably. The project we, we are on tour today with Synergy and David Green. Thank you for investing here in the city of Worcester. Um, this building has affordable condos, an office building conversion, and a unique approach to addressing the housing crisis. This idea stems from the Fallon scaling down and as people pivot to re remote work, there will be more vacant office space that can be converted from space that is unused to space we desperately need. I am particularly excited about the affordable condos that will be provide folks with an opportunity to build generational wealth. Making sure that all can benefit from development is important to me as mayor of the city of Worcester. This bill and our partnerships with public and private entities like Synergy, Worcester Business Development Corporation with Greg Blaze is with us today, in the Chamber of Commerce with Tim Murray will be essential in overcoming the current obstacles. I want to thank everyone again for the work in these efforts and hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I'd like now to welcome up to speak our governor who has been taking unique approaches to ensuring Massachusetts continues to be great. Governor Haley has been working tirelessly to address the ongoing needs of our state while also recognizing the needs of our cities all over. Governor, welcome back to the city of Worcester. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, good afternoon, and thank you so much, Mayor Petty. It's uh, great to be here. <clears throat> As the mayor said, we were here just a week ago uh, with a focus on, on life sciences and economic development, and uh, we're here today to talk about housing, which is really, really important to our administration, and I know to so many of you. Also, we were really proud to invite our entire cabinet here today to the great city of Worcester and had the benefit of having the whole cabinet here in Worcester. Uh, secretaries of our cabinet are right out as we speak in meetings and in places around Worcester uh, to, uh, to work on a number of uh, things that we're trying to advance through our administration. But I wanna thank the mayor, city manager, Batista, all of our legislators with whom we partner on so much and um, housing is certainly top of the agenda so it's wonderful to be among all of you great to be joined by the lieutenant governor kim driscoll who has been out there hustling across the state a lot of conversations with town and city officials with developers um, with others just how we can do this work and create affordable housing for everybody in the state and to that end, we have the Commonwealth's first ever Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities in Worcester's own, Ed Augustus. Uh, no stranger to creative solutions and 
uh, what, what it takes to get things done. And of course, our CEO of Mass Housing, Crystal Cornegay, who is a national leader on affordable housing and access to home ownership. Dave Greeny of Synergy, wonderful to be with you and your team to have just had a tour uh, to see what these actual units are gonna look like that soon residents will be in. And it's super, super exciting. A great example of the very critical private sector investment that we need and that we need to continue to incent. And Craig Blay, thank you so much for the Worcester Business Development Council. Appreciate you being here today as well. We're here in Worcester because great things are happening in the heart of the Commonwealth. Um, we're here specifically at 22 Elm because housing is the biggest challenge that we face as a state. It really is. We need to produce more homes and do that now. We need to produce more homes so that we bring down costs. I don't want to see people priced out of our communities. Young families, recent graduates, our seniors, workers, and so many more. And that is why we propose the $4.1 billion Affordable Homes Act. We want to address this and unlock housing investments around our state, unlock private development, and bring down costs for everyone. It's also why we need <clears throat> to be out there with creative solutions now and the ability to work across state government with private development to get this done is what we need right now to meet this moment. Today, what we've seen at 22 Elm is one of those solutions. This office building is being turned into more than 200 homes, 200 homes. It will include affordable home ownership opportunities. It's taking advantage of the HDIP program, which is the housing tax credit that we tripled in size with our tax cut package this year. Many thanks to the legislature for that. It's an investment in Worcester with homes for residents, talent for employers, and customers for downtown business. And it's why cities across the country are looking at what we do with our office space. And here you see Worcester leading. This building <clears throat> could have sat vacant. As we know, more companies are looking to shrink some of their office space. There's remote work opportunities. Things have changed right out there. But what we don't want to see is infrastructure sitting empty when we know it could be turned into housing for so many people who so desperately need and want that in our state. So today we're pleased to announce a program we call the Commercial Conversion Initiative. Mass Housing has set aside a million dollars to help our cities and towns plan redevelopment, redevelopment strategies just like this one. We want our, our communities to be able to leverage their assets and unlock opportunities. And we want them to be strongly positioned to take advantage of new capital funding we hope to see through passage of the Affordable Homes Act. That includes a $275 million fund for innovative strategies like commercial conversions like this. I want to thank everybody um, who is active in this effort to grow more housing around the state. And I want to thank you for your partnership and thank you for continued partnership in this critically, critically important work that we must do. And now I'd like to bring to the podium our terrific Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you, Governor, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity that the Governor and the Lieutenant Governor have given me to continue to try to serve uh, our Commonwealth and, and uh, of course, our city of Worcester here, which uh, is very close to my heart. And again, today I think is a great example of how, as the governor mentioned, Worcester is leading the way. Uh, this is a building because of the changing way people are working, particularly post-pandemic, uh, that this building otherwise might have been empty for a significant period of time, which would have been a drain on the tax resources of the city of Worcester, as well as not fully contributing to the vitality of the downtown. And the conversion of this is creating opportunities to keep this building vibrant, active, and putting literally hundreds of people in downtown Worcester. You know, Worcester for a long time has looked for an 18-hour day. 
that 18 hour day is possible because there are folks who work in downtown Worcester and when they leave at the end of the day they're replaced by people who are coming home to downtown Worcester and those people need to go out to eat they need their dry cleaning they need to go to the drugstore they need to do all of the things anybody does uh, in their free time in their neighborhood and that is going to add to the vibrancy the walkability to the safety of our downtown and so this project I think ticks so many boxes not only does it save this building in terms of contributing to the vitality of Worcester it creates desperately needed homes uh, for so many folks here in the city and in the region the ownership opportunity is the first time in 30 years that we're adding ownership opportunities in downtown Worcester affordable ownership opportunities so people can start to develop uh, and build that equity that we know not only benefits them but uh, subsequent generations uh, and it gives folks kind of a grounding in this neighborhood they've got a stake in this neighborhood they're going to care about this neighborhood they're going to care when trash is on the street or something that isn't right is happening around the corner they're going to they're vested so this is a great example of that and we think that there are opportunities in every corner of the commonwealth where there are offices that have been offline for significant periods of times or are now starting to reposition in this post-pandemic world and are exactly where uh, the housing is needed. They're in the core of the city where you want that walkability. Often they're historic buildings that you desperately don't want to lose. You want to keep that historic character of your community. Uh, and by doing this office conversion uh, support with the help of mass housing, we're going to help cities learn from Worcester's example, find buildings that they want to save that have not been online for a number of years and say, all right, how does this lay out for housing? How many units can we fit here? What do we need to do around zoning changes in order to facilitate these buildings being uh, changed over to housing? And really focus the attention. And if you think about the green element of that, much of the core and shell of this building is going to remain, which means less materials that need to be used. That adds to the greenness of this building uh, and the sustainability of this project. So, so many boxes get che checked by really focusing on these office conversions. And so, I want to really thank the governor, lieutenant governor, for kind of giving us the charge to think outside the box. And as was mentioned, the Affordable Homes Act really is going to be uh, complementing this effort because there's this innovation fund that has a substantial amount of dollars there that as communities go through this planning process and figure out the buildings they want to convert there will be substantial resources from the Commonwealth to partner with them to make those conversions possible and financially doable uh, so again uh, I'm going to pick up on the name of synergy there's a lot of synergy in this strategy here uh, by really facilitating the planning now so that when the bill is done we're ready to go because the governor and the lieutenant governor made clear we don't have a minute to waste we have a sense of urgency about this issue and how it impacts families and people across the state and we are acting with that same sense of urgency uh, so with that I, I have the great pleasure to introduce somebody I've had a chance to work very closely with uh, in my previous role but also uh, even more closely in this role uh, she heads up one of our quasi uh, agencies that really is uh, one of the ways that we deliver much of the funding and the, the programming that we have uh, to assist cities and towns and developers uh, in our communities uh, and is a legend uh, in the housing space. So uh, Crystal Cornegay, the head of Mass Housing, uh, please come on up and share some remarks. Thank you. I don't know about a legend, maybe in my own mind. <laughs> um, you know, the, the nice thing about going after the governor and the, and the, and the secretary is like they said everything. And so um, I will say that we at Mass Housing, our mission is to confront the Commonwealth's housing challenges. And um, this is a great administration to be doing that with great partnership, not only in the leadership um, and the governor and lieutenant governor, but on the secretary level, Secretary Gorkowitz partnering with us to think about ways in which we can use resources to prioritize housing production. We um, jumped at the opportunity um, and our board uh, to participate 
uh, and help with this program because we know on the municipal level there are opportunities, but municipalities are busy. And you don't always have the time or the resources to be able to really take a look at what your opportunities might be. And so we think about this as a way to partner with municipalities um, to help the willing, um, if you're interested in doing that, um, and really position people um, to do well by their um, community residents as well as be participate with the state as the uh, as the lieutenant governor says to stop admiring the problem. <laughs> and so we uh, we're happy to partner with you. We look forward to doing this, and we I want to thank my colleagues who are here, Paul McMurrow. And I can't remember her name. <laughs> it went out of my head just that fast. Uh, who is going to run the program? So I'm going to introduce everybody to her. So if you have questions, you can go talk to her. That's a <laughs> anyway. So thank you all. Um, I get the opportunity when I was. Uh, before this job, I was undersecretary and uh, spent a lot of time in Worcester with the uh, previous uh, city manager. Um, and now, as Mass Housing CEO, I'm spending a lot of time with this city manager. Um, in fact, we were together twice this week uh, thinking about how we can creatively support housing production across the Commonwealth and particularly in Worcester. So thank you very much, uh, Town Manager Batista. Thank you, Crystal, and yes, a true legend, and we can all agree to that. Um, again, I am pleased to welcome Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor. Welcome to Worcester. Welcome back to Worcester for yet another exciting housing announcement. The state <clears throat> has been an invaluable partner in addressing the housing crisis, and the administration, this administration realizes the ability to lead by example. This project here at Chestnut Place illustrates the ability, as it will be the largest commercial to residential conversion in the state, repurposing underutilized properties to create new housing. I'll say that again, repurposing underutilized properties to create new housing. We hope that this can be a model for other municipalities as an effective means, <clears throat> as an effective means of residential development. And we greatly appreciate the state supporting similar projects with the Commercial Conversion Initiative. The nearly 200 market rate apartments that are replacing the former office space at One Chestnut Place will add much needed inventory to the current housing stock challenges that we have in the city of Worcester. Furthermore, like has been mentioned, 22 condo units at 80% AMI will be constructed next door at the Two Chestnut Place and will provide critical affordable home ownership opportunities, which are known to be important, as, as been mentioned before, pathway to equity and wealth for our residents. It's also noticeable that these will be the first condos built in downtown in about 30 years. And by the way, for former city manager, current secretary at Augustus, it's nice that we're finally here. Because he, he, was, he was a huge champion uh, in trying to get condos in downtown. Location, location, location. It's also another key factor. These buildings will attract more residents to re-energize our downtown, spurring more foot traffic, small business support, and increasing tax revenue. I'll say that again, increasing tax revenue. <laughs> this project is also a result of number of partners. It, this doesn't happen alone. Working together and utilizing different tools in our housing solutions toolbox, signed by Worcester Housing Strategy, that is driven, that is driving residential development across the city. So again, I want to thank Governor Healy and her administration, including our Executive Office of uh, Housing of Livable Community Secretary at Augustus for their continued commitment, support to these projects, and providing critical support through the HDIP and other community development programs. I also want to thank our state and federal delegations for their advocacy on behalf of Worcester. And to our mayor and city council, this project will not be done without them. Recognizing the importance of tools like adaptive reuse in our tie plans for residential development. Not only will the Chestnut Place tie plan help facilitate construction, but it will also ensure that M uh, MBE and WBE contractors play a, a significant role in this project. I also want to recognize and thank David Green, thank you, and Synergy Investments for their commitment to Worcester, an investment in our downtown community. They realize, they realize the potential of Worcester as a destination city for residents and businesses alike. And I also want to commend Synergy for stepping up to provide affordable condos. 
as part of this project, despite not being, despite not being subject to inclusionary zoning. They volunteered to do this work. We have an entire coalition of partners working to facilitate residential development. Too many to name them all, but I want to recognize a few folks, uh, and most specifically, our Economic Coordinating Council, including Tim Murray in the Chamber of Commerce, Craig Blaze in the Worcester Development Corporation, and I know John Weaver is here from MBI as well. But last but not certainly, a lot of this work doesn't happen without a good leader, and that leader is our, uh, from our Worcester Executive Office of Economic Development, led by Peter Dunn. For managing our city's housing strategy and programs and making sure that projects like Chestnut's Place align with the city's economic development agenda. So again, thank you, and now I have the pleasure to turn things over to the man of the hour, David Greeny. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, I thought I'm the man of the hour. I know it's St. Patrick's Day weekend, and what, like, what, what a bonus to have met representatives of the Healy and Driscoll family here to kick off our celebrations. Uh, but uh, seriously, uh, housing is difficult. Office to conversion housing is even more difficult. There is no way uh, that this project would, uh, would happen without a true public and private partnership. I want to thank the governor, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Augustus, Mayor Potty, um, Crystal uh, over at Mass Housing and her team, Kate Racer uh, uh, working with the Secretary and her team. Uh, everybody has been like, let's find a solution. Uh, this started with the city of Worcester, uh, a wonderful place to do business. We first started uh, uh, investing in Worcester back in 2019 in an office building across the street. Uh, we looked at this building, thought, saw that Fallon's lease was about to expire and said, what can we do? How can we make this better? And we had the thought of converting it to, to residential we went and spoke to Peter Dunn and spoke to uh, City Manager Batista. Uh, they were just open doors. How can we help you? How can we make this happen? Um, Mira Potty was super uh, supportive. City Council was supportive. It is just a breath of fresh air to be able to come into a city with a can-do attitude, and then Worcester has that. And you, 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 you combine that with the, the, the priority for housing that this administration has, and that's kind of why we're here today. I'd just like to acknowledge a few folks on our side who've been instrumental. Uh, this project has been led by Ryan Chamberlain from, from Synergy and the, the local team here in Worcester, uh, DMS, uh, I lead the design team, and have been very creative in dealing with what is a, a challenging floor plate. It's difficult to convert. And I'll just tell you like, some of the things that are difficult. You know, when you have physical assets that are built 40 or even 100 years ago, they don't contemplate residential. So whether it's the depth of the units, the window line, uh, the amount of different services that are needed, you, going to be required within the building. Not all buildings, I would say maybe 10% of buildings could be converted from office to residential or automatic ones. Others require a lot more effort to be able to convert and it's challenging. You need to have a talented team to be able to do so. Uh, we're very pleased with the, with the new initiative for mass housing. We think the idea of getting out and having municipalities think about what their existing office stock is and having those funds to be able to get experts to come in and tell them, does the physical asset work? The step one, that, that's what you gotta do, determine if the physical asset works. I will tell you that um, based on the current environment, construction costs, interest rates, it is gonna be difficult to do any type of housing. So having the state and having the municipalities come in to be able to support these projects, make conversion of empty, underutilized assets into homes. And that is something that we are very much behind. It's good policy on a number of levels, and we're delighted to be part of this project, as previously mentioned, which is the largest of such projects uh, in the Commonwealth. We hope it's the, the first of many. So thank you very much. I'm going to invite Governor Healy back up uh, to close out remarks. Thank and you. please, uh, sandwiches in the back. For everybody. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much, David. Um, thank you to everybody, and uh, really, really excited to be able to show off what's possible here today. Um, and uh, we're happy to take any questions on topic. Governor, yeah. have there been any uh, cities and towns that expressed interest in uh, taking part in the one for new one million dollar program because they feel like they might have stock that's interest? I'm gonna let uh, Crystal and uh, Secretary Augustus offer their, my hope is I hope so, but we're just announcing it today, so. Um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> although we have been uh, kind of test driving it with uh, some municipalities, uh, uh, Fitchburg being one of them. So, yeah. thank um. you, Mayor, by the way, for being with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think we know, as the secretary said, you know, we we know there are office office buildings around the state, and at the outset. 
the LG and I said, let's do a few things. Let's inventory state property. Let's look at existing infrastructure, whether it's an old mill or factory, or whether it's an office building that can be repurposed to meet what is the now need, which is housing in our state. Yes. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm not the one equipped to answer. I do know the, the answer is yes. Um, and, and people rightly call for, you know, whether we're talking downtown Boston or here in Worcester, hey, let's just turn these units into housing. Um, the how is more complicated, and Crystal and David will speak to that. But, you know, again, innovation, what can we do? How do we get to yes and make it work? Yeah, I mean, most buildings that aren't built for housing are difficult to convert, not just office buildings. Like, you think about schools, and they're really big, wide corridors. You think about churches, and but we figure all of those things out. Um, not every one of those works, and so part of this initiative is to really narrow down on what does work so that we can um, help municipalities get prepared for some resources that we uh, think is coming through the Affordable Homes Act. So, thank you. You want to say anything? Yeah, sure. Yes, it is. It's super difficult, you know, because of uh, you know the, the construction, you know, the depth of the, of the properties, etc. So you really have to have a creative team, and you really have to be able to, you know, get in there and understand because it's too easy just to say let's convert office to housing. You know, there's a significant amount of study and upfront work needed. That's why this program that the uh, the state is announcing today will give municipalities the dollars and the expertise to evaluate very quickly what is a good candidate and what's not a good candidate. Great. One more? Yes? Another question for Ed, actually. Okay. Um, do you know what the market rates are for the housing that is going to be uh, specifically for uh, the city? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, so uh, for our Rental market rate rental units were between low 2000s to mid 2000s uh, per month, depending on the, on the unit size. And for the for sale affordable units that we're doing in partnership with the Planning Office of Urban Affairs, who have been a fantastic partner, uh, these are going to be for sale units. And it's going to be in about $210,000 sale price. Um, again, depend on average, depending on the size of the units. And um, that would be through the lottery system at 80% of AMI. All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day weekend, too.